Hello, uh, Mark Ostwald from ADM um, Investor Services International. Uh, with uh, some thoughts this week on the oil market um, and uh, uh, some broader perspectives from the oil market, specifically with reference to the US economy. Um, my first chart this week uh, is the oil price. I think uh, at the end of the quarter, um, the real story here is, yes, we've had a much bigger range than we had in Q2, as can be more than amply seen on that chart, starting uh, the quarter with a lot of pessimism about the demand prospect, and then uh, having the big shock two weeks ago uh, from the uh, bombing um, of the uh, uh, Abkaik and uh, Kuras's, um, uh <coughs> oil plants in Saudi Arabia. Um, but it really still gives us testament to, given the fact that we don't actually now see much uh, uh, disruption to the, the supply side of the equation, we are still basically focused on the fact that with a slower global economy, we are expecting uh, um, oil prices basically to remain well contained, given that supply is quite ample. But it does also skew our view of the oil market in the sense that the big risks are clearly from the supply side rather than from the demand side, which we've got more than factored in. So let's move on. Uh, this week, we've had the uh, Dallas Fed's quarterly survey um, on the energy market. Dallas Fed obviously in charge of the whole Texas region and the whole shale oil region. Um, the overall uh, energy survey index coming down to minus 7.4. That's the lowest since we saw the big collapse in oil prices back at the end of 2015. Most, more notably, uh, the sub-index for oil, oil and um, gas services companies uh, literally fell off the face of a cliff uh, with the prior index being at 6.6 .6 and the new index at minus 21.8. This is instructive, and I think if we look at some of the commentary uh, that accompanied the survey, it's well worth looking at. Um, first of all, on the lack of capital, which I'll come back to at the very end, uh, the capital market has dried up for small exploration and production companies. Unless there is a material pullback, the environment is static around $55. Um, Operational and cost problems, many oil shale projects are failing to meet pro uh, production projections. This to me is actually a very, very important because we keep on emphasizing in terms of the supply side that we are oversupplied with oil, uh, largely due to the production in the United States. Uh, take your time, slow the video down when you're looking back at this one uh, to have a read through all the comments. Uh, the next uh, slide though is the one which um, <coughs> I think is important in that respect. U.S. oil production, these are comments from uh, people surveyed, obviously. Uh, U.S. oil production is about to fall uh, significantly. The rig count has declined dramatically from a year ago, and our customers are not completing wells in order to save cash flow. Uh, this all equals a big shift down. Um, so we come to my final chart um, and uh, some broader observations. First of all, um, as we know, the high yield bond market is heavily populated, roughly one third uh, by energy companies. Uh, energy sector spreads have been widening quite significantly, much, much more than we've seen in the underlying market. One can see uh, the comparison with this time last year, where the spread between the two, between the all sector uh, high yield credit spread and the energy sector one was much, much narrower. Secondly, uh, it's very much, well, it can be argued that um, the uh, U.S. economy has uh, outperformed many of its counterparts, first of all, because it dealt uh, resolutely with the uh, bank um, balance sheet reconciliation, and secondly, because of the oil sector boom. If that's not to be the case, then perhaps the prospects for the U.S. economy in terms of outperformance are not necessarily going to be that good. And thirdly, we also need to think about, do we actually have much, as much oversupply as people are thinking?